Um, my name is Michael Valtos. I'm the founder and trader at orderflows.com and today I'll be talking about how to profit from the order flow with common sense analysis. You know, lots of times people try to make trading more complicated than it really is. Um, before I get started, I gotta go through a brief disclaimer. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to buy or sell a futures contract or make any other type of investment decision. Futures trading contains substantial risk and it's not for every investor. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk capital is money that could be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. As performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. In short, don't, uh, don't trade with your rent money. So what is order flow analysis and how can it help you as a trader? Well, in its basic form, it's the analysis of volume traded on the bid and volume traded on the offer at each price. And by looking at the volume traded at, at price, the trader will get a better understanding of what is happening in the market. So today, what I will explain, what I will cover is how to find market turning points while they're happening, how to get out of bad trades before they stop you out, how to see market reversals as they are occurring, how to confidently go into any trading situation even in unpredictable markets. You know, today is a good example. It's the election day and I'm sure there'll be a lot of volatility after the main session closes once the results start coming in officially. And lastly, how to make smarter trading decisions almost instantly. Um, before I get started, you know, I, for people that are not familiar with me, you know, I'll explain who I am and, and my background a little bit. You know, Again, I'm not saying this to brag or anything like that. I just want you know, people to understand my background and where I'm coming from in teaching order flow. So in 1994, I started on the CME floor with Dean Witter Reynolds. I literally started at the bottom. I was a runner. And in 96, once electronic, started, electronic trading started taking off, I moved off the trading floor to the upstairs trading desk at Dean Witter. And I was exposed to all the markets around the world. In 97, I left. In winter, I joined EDF Man on their global trading desk. Then about a year later, I joined Commerce Bank when they set up their trading operation in Chicago. In 2002, I joined Cargill's uh, futures trading desk. And in 2004, they asked me to go to Singapore to set up their trading desk once, once the trading floor on Cymex was closing. And in 2006, I joined JP Morgan as vice president of futures trading. And I stayed there until 2013 when I retired. After that, I started my family, did some traveling, and 2014, I wanted to get a little bit back in the market. I started working with traders, and I founded orderflows.com. So what is orderflows.com? Well, it's, it's a software that runs on the NinjaTrader trading platform, and what it does, it takes the standard volume footprint chart. It makes it easier in terms of analysis for the trader to read what's going on and I also include multiple indicators to give you clues as to what's going on. I mean, you know, we could all look at a chart, but you don't know if you're looking at, then you'll be lost. And, you know, it was developed by a professional trader for traders of all experience. Uh, you know, there's a lot of order flow that doesn't necessarily apply to everybody, but you know, if you could just take one or two pieces from order flow and, and add it to your trading, you know, it can really transform your trading results. You know, I know people that have adapted order flow into their trading just based on one or two pieces of order flow analysis. So, you know, a brief history, you know, the past. Order flow, you know, it was on the trading floor. You had to be on the trading floor to see the order flow. You know, prices were posted on a chalkboard. Now it's everything is computerized and, you know, it's just servers, racks and racks of servers. In the past, to get your data, you'd have a ticker tape. I mean, this, this is really in the past 100 years ago. Now, you know, you could be sitting outside on a laptop in a coffee shop, you know, enjoying your, your frappuccino and, and trade the market. You know, in the past, you, you couldn't do that. You had to be in an office somewhere that had the ticker tape. But now, with the advent of computers, it, it's really opened the door for a lot of people to get into trading. You know, the barriers to entry have dropped enormously you know, in, in the last 20 years, um, you know, back in the 90s, you know, if you were paying $20 a round turn, that was considered very cheap. Now, if you're paying over $5 a round turn, that's very expensive. So, you know, really quick, you know, a standard candlestick bar chart, right, it, it has information, you know, it has where the price opened, where it closed, 
the high and the low of the bar, and you know, and it's colored. You know, it's green if the bar is up. It's it's red if the bar is down. Yeah, we we all know that. I mean, that's just basic stuff. And you know, there's people that they they make their life out of analyzing candlesticks or or bar patterns. But you know what? They're about as right as often as they're wrong. You know, like here we have this high. And you know, candlestick guys will say, "Oh, you had a bearish engulfing pattern here and here. You know, we came off a little bit. Then you got a bullish engulfing pattern." Yeah, well, you know, for every bar, you can say something. You know, here you have a bearish engulfing pattern, but the market went up. So, 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 what is it? You know, it, it when it works, they all raise their hand and say, "Oh, yeah, the candlesticks showed it." When it doesn't work, you know, they 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 don't say anything. So, moving on to order flow, you know, what it does is it breaks down what's happening inside the bar. So this is an order flows trader chart, my chart, that you know it has what's traded on the bid, what's traded on the offer. And you, know, you can see areas where traders are being aggressive, where the most volume is in a bar, which is important. You know, I mean the support and resistance exists in a bar. You know, whether you know it's a daily bar, whether it's a minute bar, whether it's a range bar, every bar it's going to have an area that has the most volume in the bar, and oftentimes that will act as support and resistance. So, you know, if you're looking at this this candlestick bar chart, you know, you have your high, you came, you started coming off here, you got some bullish, sorry, some bearish signs here, you got engulfing pattern, engulfing pattern, but then it turns around and goes back up. Well, you know, what's the sign on here? You know, you got two bearish bars, and you got a bullish bar, and the market goes up. So you can say. The bullish bar is takes over the, the two bearish bars. You know, I mean, you know, that, that's Monday morning quarterbacking. You know, by the time you're looking at it, the market's up here. But with the order flows, you can see the market coming off. But you can see inside the bar, you can see when supply and demand is shifting. You know, when the market's going down, it's a supply-driven market. When the market goes back up, it's demand-driven. And you can see the demand with imbalances in the bar as the market starts going back up. You can see the aggressive buying as the market starts going back up. So for anybody that, that's not really familiar with order flow, I'll, I'll discuss a few terms really quick. Point of control is the price in the bar with the most volume. So on an order flow chart, it's got this box around it. Okay, So each bar has a box. That's the point of control. The delta is the difference between the volume traded on the bid and the volume traded in the offer. Now there are two subsets of delta. There's the max delta and there's the min delta. The max delta is the most positive level in a bar, which is you know the buying. The min delta is the most negative level in a bar, which is the selling. So generally it's put along the bottom. So you'll have your headline delta number. So you can see in this bar the pos the delta was positive, 4,800. The max delta was 4,913. The min delta was negative 25. So in this bar here on the low, the, max, the delta was 4849, 4,849. Bots traded more on the offer than on the bid. That indicates there was more buying in the bar than, than people selling into the bid. The max delta was 4913. So the delta closed up near the max. The min delta was negative 25. So the most selling in this bar at any point was you know minus 25 it was was when the delta was minus 25 so at, the sellers were were not really ever in control of this bar it was mostly buyers and the next three things are imbalances and what an imbalance is there's buying imbalance there's selling imbalance and a buying imbalance is when there's four times or more volume traded on the offer than on the bid Selling imbalance is the opposite. There's four times more volume traded on the bid than on the related offer. And how it shows up on an order flows chart, it'll be for selling imbalance, it'll be red, you know, for red is the sell. So you can see 435 against 11. You know, the market trades, it's an auction, right? It trades a bid against an offer. So 435 traded on this bid against 11 on the offer. That's an imbalance. On a market that's going down, you want to see selling imbalances. Buying imbalance is the blue numbers. 31 against 346, uh, 48 against 262, 3 against 119, 147 against 1497. These are buying imbalances. Now, on a market that's going up, you like to see buying imbalances. You like to see buyers getting aggressive, buying what's on the offer, 
and turning a bid and buying the next offer on the way back up. And lastly, a stacked imbalance is when you have three or more imbalances stacked on top of each other, one, two, three here. So these are the terms, that you'll, you'll see me referring back to these terms um, often in this presentation. If, if you want, send me an email, you'll get my email at the end of this presentation, and I'll send you a, a copy of this PDF, or you could go to my website and, and download it. Okay, so let's get started. So how order flow will help you? It'll help you find market turning points while they're happening. Um, you know, you don't want to be in a position and have the market turn, and by the time you realize it's turned, it's too late. So you know, this is a trade that I took in the trading room um, recently. And what it was, I got short here at 21.42 and a quarter. I covered back at 37 and a quarter. So that's five S&P points on five lots. And the reason I, I covered it, rather than you know try and risk, you know, let it go lower, is because you know I, I can read in the order flow that it was changing from a, you know, I'm short, so it was, so it was changing from a supply-driven market to a demand-driven market. Buyers started coming in here, so rather than you know, you know, let the market come back and you know, cover it at a higher price. You know, I was able to, to cover it at, at, a, at a lower price. So, you know, I'll, I'll take you through this trade, and you know, hopefully, you can understand the, the logic behind it. You know, I have a trading room. It's for my users of software, and you know, it's free. It's not open to the public. I used to have it open to the public, but I've just found you know it's easier for me to discuss this with people that are using my software because you know they would have questions. And it's easier for me to answer it if we're all looking at the same charts. So, okay, at 9.05, I was looking at the chart, and I, I saw this low that happened at 8.39, and I thought, okay, maybe this is going to be our low for the day. We started rallying, okay, so we were trading 21.44, three quarters. And then, you know, I, I noticed, you know, all of a sudden, instead of having this up bar, we got a, we got a red bar, I got a ratio, this is an order flow number here. You know, I said my software does calculations. What that's what these are, and you know, it's telling me that hey, you know, this market, you know, this move up could be ending, and we could start another move down. Okay, well, you know, we're still up here. You know, the bar is still open. It's it's not closed yet. So you know, I, I want to watch it. You know, I'm being, I'm at this point. You know, I'm being clued in that you know we could be having a potential reversal or this move. Um, from the low back up to here is over. Okay, so you know here, 924. This bar closes. You know I like to wait for the bars to close rather than get in while the bar is still forming because you know it, as you know, you could have a bearish signal while the bar is still forming, but and you, you think I'm going to get in, get in early, and all of a sudden the bar you know it changes and closes higher, and, and the whole reason for getting short is no longer there, and you actually you should probably be long. So at 9:24, you know, this bar closes, and we're trading a little bit lower. Okay, so that's my sign that I should I should be seriously get short. So you know, a minute later, I see some selling imbalances coming in. You know, 5:43, 15:28. We've got negative delta, no max delta, just all negative delta. That's you know, very bearish signs in the order flow. Okay, so I get short at 42 and a quarter. And you know we trade back and forth. You know we trade up to 43, um, you know down to 41 and a half. And then you know the bar closes. We get this big selling imbalance in there, 5,000. By the time the bar is closed, and we start heading lower. We're going into the close. Got some nice selling imbalances into the close. Nice strong negative delta, 5,000. A little bit later, you know that bar closes down. You know right on the lows, you got more selling imbalances. A new bar opens. Negative delta again. You know that's that's what you like. It's going in your direction. We're trading uh, 21.38 and three quarters at this point. Okay, so I'm thinking, you know, hey, we could be making, you know, a nice move lower. Um, you know, lower from here. The way this bar is is shaping up. You know, it's all everything looks looks negative. You know, a minute later, again, it still looks negative. We got a nice strong negative delta minus 2,446. You know, we got a ratio in there indicating some some price rejection. Okay, then you know a minute later, 946, what happens? The delta changes. All of a sudden you got positive 576, whereas a minute ago it was all negative. It was zero was the max delta. The the delta was minus 2446. All of a sudden 
buyers came in and turned it, you know, positive 576. So they've bought, you know, two and a half thousand plus an additional 500. So they have 3,000 to turn it positive. In, you know, so that that's a sign. You're seeing the signs that buying is coming back in. Okay, all of a sudden it's you know, a minute later, it's getting more positive, it's sitting here at 1,300. Okay, now all of a sudden it's, it's positive 3,700. Yeah. When early in the bar it was negative minus 3,600, now it's turned extremely positive. And, you know, it's ate back all that 3,659 and it's gone positive 3,770. So it's literally a 180-degree 180, 180 shift. So, you know, at this point, and buyers have taken over, and I said, I, got, I should get out because, you know, if buyers are taking over, you're at your low, and buyers are stepping up, you know, you should start trading higher. So, you know, a little bit later, I cover it, 2137 and a quarter. I don't want to fight all this buying. You know, I see a lot of buying coming in. Might as well just take this chance. You know, if I leave a little money on the table, okay, but at the same time, and I said, you know, if we pop up here, I'd rather be buying it at 37 and a quarter than, you know, at 39 or, or even at 40. So, okay, you know, 955, you know, I've already covered it. And you see the delta is extremely positive, 6,874. Although we're still trading around this, um, you know, 38, 37 and three quarters. We haven't really popped up yet, but I'm seeing a lot of volume forming down in here. So I see in the order flow, I see a lot of support coming into this market. And then by, you know, by just after 10 o'clock, the bar closed, closed a little higher, very strong positive delta, 10,000. And at this point, you know, we traded 39, 38, three quarters. So, you know, I buy to cover it, you know, by reading the order flow, you know, I could see that this move lower was over. So, you know, if I'm sitting down here at 35, you know, I, I can tell that it's not going to go down there because I see a lot of support coming in here. I see a lot of buying coming in off the slow. So it would be in my best interest to cover it and, you know, take the profits now rather than, you know, wait for this, either this market to go sideways or maybe the market to rally back up. And instead of covering it at 37 and a quarter, I'm covering it at 40 and a quarter and giving back a lot of profits. You know, it's not, um, you know, when, when you, you know, when you're trading, right? You want, you want to maximize your, your trades. Now that includes getting out when you see what's happening in the markets has changed. And you know, what did the market do out uh, of curiosity? It just went, it did make a new low. It did get down to 35 and a quarter, but you know, that's at 11.46. That's almost two hours later. And you know, I'm not gonna wait two hours just to get an extra point. Um, you know, so it was decent to get out here. And, but, you know, we just went sideways the rest of the day. You know, this is 4 o'clock where we closed. So, you know, the, the next thing that I'm going to discuss is how to get out of bad trades before they stop you out. And, you know, how order flow will help you realize you're in a bad trade and, you know, get you out. One of the reasons, one of the things that uh, a lot of traders that I work with, you know, I, I do mentoring and I said I, I do work in the trading room with traders is, they have this perception that they have to either let the trade go to their take profit or to their stop. And taking it a step further, sometimes they'll adjust their take profit closer because you know maybe they think the market's turning, but then they won't adjust their stop. They'll still leave their stop, and so you know they, they've limit, they've reduced their take profit, but they kept their their risk the same, which you know isn't necessarily a good thing. So, you know, this is, I'll go over this trade. This is a trade that I took in the bonds. This, again, this was in the room. This was a failed trade. I took a one tick loss on this trade instead of being stopped out for four ticks. You know, I, I would love to just sit here and just show you trades that all work out beautifully. But, you know, you know I, I do have losing trades. Uh, full disclosure, I do have losing days. Um, you, know, you just try to minimize the damage. So, you know, I'll, I'll walk through this trade again, just like I did the last one. So this is in the bonds. In the bonds, I use a four range chart. So, you know, it's 9.16 in the morning and I'm starting to see something in the order flows. I see this ratio up here. I see that you're having heavy volume up here. So that to me, that's a sign that maybe, you know, if this market starts turning lower, we can sell off. And where am I looking for it to sell off? I'm looking for it to sell off into this value area. Well, I knew that I don't have the volume profile up here, but I knew the value area was in here around 11, 
and 12. So, you know, if we start to sell off, if I, if I get short around 21, 22, you know, I could get, you know, possibly uh, 10 ticks down to 11 or 12. But, you know, the bar is still forming. You know, it's 918. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating how the market's developing. I can see how it's trading. And I know what I want to do if this bar is going to close this direction. I know I'm going to want to get short. But I need the bar to close because, you know, this bar can just turn and then start. Next thing you know, if I get short here thinking, hey, I can get in now, get in early, but the bar is still forming, it could just turn around on me really quick and next thing you know, we're trading 25. Okay, so, you know, 918, the bar closed. A new bar begins. We're trading uh, 164.19. So the point of control of this bar right here is at uh, 22. So, you know, I know that... Points of control often act as support or resistance. So if I'm going to say this is our high, my point of control will be my resistance, and I'll look for a pullback up towards there. So it's at 22, so I'll get short at 21. I'll put an offer in there at 21. And if I get a pullback up there, I'm, I'm happy to get, get short there, and hopefully we can make that move. Okay, so 919. Instead, again, I'm looking to get short in here. My stop is going to be just above this high. 164.24 is the high, so my stop's going to be at, at 25. You know, it, it's a tight stop. It's four ticks, but, you know, I don't, I don't need to risk a lot. I know that if we get above this level up here where I, I have this volume to hide behind that, you know, if we start trading above it, the, the whole reason for the trade falls apart. I don't need to be short because the, the whole thinking is based on this volume that's trading up here. Okay, so 9.19, um, market starts trading back, I get filled at 21. Okay, my stop again, you know, keep that in mind, it's at 164.20, just right up here. The point of control for this bar, I'm sorry, my stop's at 25, the point of control for the bar is at 164.20. Now, that's going to be important, you know, I'll show you in a second. 9.22, so the market's trading back and forth between 22, 164, 22, 164, 19 is going back and forth. What is interesting is the point of control moved up from 20 up to 21. And why is that important? Well, you're trading more volume at a higher price. Okay, initially it was at 20, now it's at 21. So uh, there's more activity happening at higher prices, which isn't what you want to see when you're short. You want to see more activity happening on the way down, not on the way up. So you know, that alone right there is a red flag, as well as this mine imbalance of 651, 148 against 651. Okay, and now we got another buying imbalance up here, you know, 184 against 750. So now I got two buying imbalances. I've got the higher point of control. You know, I'm starting to not freak out, but you know, I'm starting to to to, war, to worry about this trade. I'm starting to get some bullish signals when I'm short. So, you know, I, I don't have to let the market go all the way to my stop. You know, I, I see this volume, heavier volume trading up here, 763, 789. You know, I got two buying imbalances. You know, points of control is moving up. I just decide that I, I better get out here at 22 while I can. Um, you know, I. I I know that when you start, you know, on a market that's going up, you know, you expect to see buying imbalances just as on a market that's going lower, you expect to see selling imbalances. You had a selling imbalance here, you had a selling imbalance here. Yeah, I'm trying to get short. I was short and, you know, expecting the market to sell off. Instead, now I'm staring at two buying imbalances for big numbers, a point of control that's migrated up in the bar, and you know, I, I got to make a decision. Do I get out now or, or do I wait the market to stop me out? you know, for the full the full thing. I could have, you know, probably worked my get out at 164.21, but, you know, when you're trading and you start seeing a lot of volume going through, you know, sometimes you just got to, you just got to bite the bullet and, and get out. You know, we all want to try and scratch trades for no loss, but, you know, sometimes you, you just got to grab your ankles and, and take it. And, you know, at, at 9.26, a couple minutes later, the market trades back down to 20. Actually, traded back down to 19. And I'm thinking, you know, what the fuck did I just do? I, I, I was short at 21, and we're trading, you know, 1920, and I covered it at 22. But, you know, I'm still, I, I see this, and, you know, I, I trust myself as a trader 
that I, I know that I see that that my the odds in my are the market's going to go higher, and you know you, you just got to accept it. And what happens a minute later? The market shoots back up to 23. Okay, so you know oftentimes the market does give you you know maybe a, a second chance to get out at a scratch or a small loss. If it does, take it. You said you know even even if it's just a tick that you're losing, take it. You know it's it's better to take a tick loss than a four tick loss. So you know now we're trading 23. Okay, we're above this previous point of control, and you know again, you know some, some very heavy volume in there. And then what happens? 9.29, we trade all the way up to 25. You know, my stop just above this high at uh, 164.25. So you know, if I didn't cover it at 22, I, I would have been stopped out for sure. And whether I've been filled at 25, you know, who knows? I, I could have taken a, a tick of slippage and got filled at 26. You know, it's it's if you're seeing things in the order flow that's telling you get out, you know, get out. You know, if you're in a building and you see smoke, what do you do? You run out. You don't sit there and and, and wait till the fire is right in your face. You, you you get out, and that's what order flow will help you determine. You know, when a trade is working out and when it's not working out. When when you see, you know, things confirming the direction of your trade, you know, that's great. But when you see things that are working in opposite of your trade, you know, take the signs, take the clues, and you know, get out of the trade. Don't let it blow you out of the position. You know, if you take a, you can minimize your risk. You know, everybody says, every trading book says, minimize your risk, maximize your winners, and it's easier said than done. But if you take it a step further and read what the market is telling you, listen to what it's saying, then you can really um, you know, progress your trading beyond just having a fixed, you know, a fixed stop and a fixed uh, take profit. <clears throat> okay, so that the third thing that I want to talk about, you know, how order flow will help you is how to see market reversals as they're occurring. You know, everyone says the trend is your friend, the trend is your friend. Well, you know, the trend is your friend until it stops, and then, what, then it's no longer your friend. And one of the things that we've developed with Order Flows Trader is, is we have a few proprietary indicators which come with the software. I do sell them separately, but you know, I, I, when you get the software, I, I include it. So you know, I said, you know, I like people to see the same thing that I'm seeing on their charts. And what these indicators do, this one is called the price rejector, is it reads the order flow for you so you can see when the moves have potentially ended and a new move is about to begin. I hate to use the term indicators, rather these are signs, signposts, more things to slap you upside the head and say, hey idiot, don't miss this. And I mean, I can see it in the order flow without having to look at it, but you know, for the untrained eye, it helps to have it. Okay, so this is the E-mini, it's a three range, it's a very tight chart. This is, um, you know, a move, we we're trading 37 and a half, 38 come up to 40 and 3 quarters, this is the price rejector. So it's telling me, you know, hey, maybe this, this move is, is over. You know, prices above um, 40 and a half are being rejected. Okay, and, and what happens? This is the, the next part of the chart. This is that bar here, right here at uh, 12.54. See, and what happens? You can see price being rejected, and we sell off back down to 37 and a half, 38, which is where we were when the move started. You, know, you have a few other bearish indications right here in the order flow as well, but the real sign was the price rejector. This this was in the bonds. This is actually yesterday, and you know the trend is your friend until it's over. And then you got to find a new friend and a new trend. So you know the market moves up. This is the price rejector given a sell. You you got additional price rejection with the ratio divergence on the high, and we sell off down to where down to this next area where you have the price rejector giving a buy. So, you know, it's not every day where it moves literally from, you know, the price rejector uh, sell to a price rejector buy. But, you know, when it happens, it's nice. I don't want you to think that it's going to pick every single swing and every single high and low. And, you know, the beauty of trading reversals is you can have tight stops, okay? And what do I mean by tight stops? You know, you have your swing low here. 
This is the price rejector, 164.12. Your stop is just going to be down here, right below this price rejector. It's going to be at 164.11. So if you're getting along in this next bar at 164.15, 164.16, you know, again, you're talking four or five ticks, and you know, if you're long at, say, 16, you know, what do we trade? We trade up to 25, almost 26. You know, you're, you're risking four to get almost 10, you know, nine. You know, that's a, that's a two to one, that's a two to one trade. You know, people, you know, you can just do that, you know, if you can just do that once a day, you know, a lot of people will be happy. And, you know, the beauty of the price rejector, beauty of our indicators, not the main order flow software, but you know, the additional indicators is they run on normal bar charts. So, you know, again, I realize for a lot of people sometimes reading an order flow volume footprint chart is a bit much when you're first starting out. So, you know, if you want to fall back on your bar charts or you have multiple screens, you know, I've got multiple screens, I always run bar charts with the indicators, one to make sure they're working. And also, you know, I, I could see more markets, you know, because I'm looking for certain things. So this is the mini Dow, it's a five range chart, and you know you got the price rejector giving a buy here. Okay, again, like I said, it's not going to give you buys and sells all day long. It, it, that's not the point. You know, it reads the order flow. When the order flow gives you something to trade, that's when you trade it. You know, you can only trade what the market's giving you. If it's giving you nothing, then you can't trade. You know, if you're going to force a trade, it's probably going to end up in a loop, in a loss. And you know, this is a nice one. You know. One sorry, eighteen one. I don't know what that is. Eighteen one ten up to a move up to you know one sixty five. That's a nice move. Again, you know if you get just one signal like that during the day, then it's great. You know the price rejector. It works on on futures. I haven't run it on forex. So I'll, the jury's still out there. I've run it on on equities and it seems okay. So you know it is designed. I'm a futures guy, right? I'm not an equities guy. I'm not a forex guy. I'm a futures guy. My experience in 20 years is in futures. It's, so you know, that's why all our indicators run primarily on futures. And the reason that is is because the data is centralized. It comes from one source. It comes from the exchange on what actually traded. It doesn't come from um, you know, different exchanges or different brokers. Right? You're trading Forex. You don't even have you know, centralized data. What you have is bid offer. And you, know, you, you get you don't necessarily get trades, you just get bid offers uh, moving up and moving down. So the, the fourth thing that I'm going to talk about how order flow can help you is how to confidently go into any trading situation, or, you know, even in unpredictable markets. I say unpredictable markets, you know, for days like today, you don't know what's going to happen with this election. You know, Brexit was you know, a, a day when there's a lot of craziness in the markets. And, you know, just like a sports team, you know, you, you draw out game plans. You know, you have things in your mind that you want to look for in the market. You have to have, you know, trading setups that when you see things appearing, then, you know, then it's go time. Then you take the trade. So, you know, this is yesterday. This is the mini NASDAQ. You remember yesterday, right? It was a big update. And we just kept powering higher. So this is a time when, you know, just after the cash open, we're trading sideways. We haven't started really making big, big power moves yet, but you, know, you can see in the order flow the signs that things were changing. You, know, you got your point of control, the first bar here, your point of control towards the bottom. You, know, you got some heavy volume, some supportive volume down here. Don't have a ratio, but in the next bar you do have a ratio. The ratio bounds low, which indicates supportive volume. Then in the third bar again, you got another ratio bounds low. You know, if you're interested in the ratios, you know, go to my website. You can learn more about them. Um, other people have have started copying these and putting it in their software. And you know, also you have this big selling imbalance down here. You have this green arrow, which indicates you know people were selling down in here on this green bar. So you know, what? Why is that important? Well, you know, it's people are or, you know, bidding the market. You know, people are selling it. You know, they're selling the shit out of it, trying to get it to go lower. And you know, their support market is being supported, and often when you get that, you know, talk about trap traders. You know, the sellers are trapped, not the buyers, and the market's moving. You know, getting ready to move. You know, getting ready as as we're going into the highs here. So you know, in in the next chart, you know, this is where we were before down here, at uh, you know this number sixteen forty nine, and we pop up. You know, we in the next bar we're trading uh, forty seven thirty eight, forty seven thirty nine. You know, and what do you do? You trade or even off the chart, you know, trading 
you know, all the way up to, you know, what is that, 47, 45, this is high as this, this chart goes before it's off the screen. So, but you know, you're getting the signs and the order flow here early, you know, before the move happened. You know, the market was doing nothing. Oftentimes, you know, in unpredictable markets, the market's just waiting for the impetus. You know, it's waiting for people to, to step up to the plate and start to move the market. And you can see that happening in here when we're just going sideways. And then you got to move. Now this was, again, this is yesterday in the E-minis. And, you know, every time you come into a high or a low, you know, yesterday we was going into the highs, so you're going to ask yourself, is this move going to continue? Will it sell off? You need clues as to whether it's going to continue or whether it's not, whether it's going to you know, fall back down or you know, retrace the move or sell off from your highs. But you know, as we're going into these highs, you see very aggressive buying. You see buying imbalances one after the other here on the way up, you know, 2,000, 1,500, 2,500, 3,600. So you know, that's telling you that the move to these new highs is strong. And what do we do? We got up to this level here, and we just sort of went sideways. You know, came up a little bit, and then we start working our way back up again with the strong buying. You know, two and a half thousand, fourteen hundred. Then here, you got a stacked imbalance. You got twelve thirty-seven, eleven hundred, eighteen hundred. You can see it better on this chart. You know, the software will draw, you know, a green, a green zone here, and you know what happens? The market power is higher. We go sideways, start coming off. You see some very big imbalances here, 1,800, 5,000. You're thinking, okay, maybe this is it. Maybe the market's going to start to sell off. It does a little bit, runs down into this area where you have a blue number, which is, you know, uh, order flow number, telling you that, hey, there's some supportive volume. Maybe the market's going to start to go back higher. We do start going back higher. And then again, you see the, the big aggressive buying, the big imbalances coming in. 3,900, 1,271, and, you know, we make new highs. So, you know, that's the order flow telling you, you know, these, you know, even though the market's, unquote, unpredictable, you don't know, you know, a lot of volatility in the market, you see very strong buying coming in, so you, you know the direction of the market. So lastly, you know, how order flow will help you is to make smarter trading decisions almost instantly, you know. When you're learning how to drive, you didn't know how to drive. But now, you know, 20 years later, you know how to drive. You know, great. When someone drives in front of you, cuts you off, you know what to do. You know, it's it becomes an instinct, and trading become needs to become an instinct for you. So, you know, just real quick, this is yesterday again in the in the crude oil market. It's going sideways for an hour. You know, we're trading in you know 44.40 down to you know 44.30, a 10 cent range, doing nothing. Okay, but you know, what's the order flow telling you? Is it giving you a signal? Yes, it is. It's giving you a signal in the delta that buying is, the buyers are stepping up to a plate, the buyers are overrunning the sellers, the buyers are aggressively buying the available supply. And, you know, the delta surge indicator, this is an order flow indicator, it reads the delta. It's actually free. You go to my website and you can download it for free. But it's giving a signal here. Um, you know, at 44, this bar here at 44.45, and you can see it here. It's a little hard to see. It's green. And what happens over the next 10 minutes? We rally, you know, 20 cents. You know, and over the last, the previous hour, we didn't even move 10 cents. Now all of a sudden, in 10 minutes, we move, you know, over 20 cents. And the order flow is giving you the sign. You know, it's telling you what to do. So, you know. I tell traders, you know, don't make trading more complicated than necessary. You know, I, I like this picture. There's two farmers. You know, one guy is holding a bag of cash. You know, the other guy says, Did you, you got that much for your soybean crops? And the guy says, no, you know, they discovered oil in my field. So, you know, it's like you could be sitting on a lot of information, you know, a, a lot of value if you know how to use it. You know, you have oil under your, your ground, you know, and you've got to drill it to get it. So. Don't make things more complicated than necessary. You know, don't break your back, right? Being a farmer if you're sitting on an oil field. So, you know, by now you should know the benefits of order flow, and with order flow analysis, you'll be able to see market turning points while they're happening, know how to get out of bad trades before they stop you out, see market reversals as they're occurring, go into a, a trading situation 
even in unpredictable markets with confidence and make smarter trading decisions instantly. So the obvious question is how do you use order flow in your trading? Well, you can do it slow using trial and error and some of what I taught you today or you can and try and figure it out or you can do it fast and you know use the order flow trader software package that I've developed and you know it has the proven methods of market analysis and my indicators so you know really the, the choice is yours on, on what how you want to do it you want you want to sort of go around in the dark with a flashlight and try and figure it out or you want to turn the lights on and you know, what is the complete order flow trader software package? Well, it's the order flow trader software, which you know, generates the charts, the delta scalper indicator, delta candles indicator. I didn't even talk about these two in this presentation. The price rejector indicator, which you know, I did talk about in the, in the presentation. You get my order flows trading course, which is a 15 hour online course. You could watch at your leisure um, you know, over a weekend or, or you know, a couple hours a day for the next two weeks. And you get access to my trading room. You know, I, again, yeah, my trading room is not open to the public. Okay, it's it's only for users of the software. And you know, how much is this going to cost you? The big question. Well, my software normally I, I sell it for just the tr order flow trader software, which is just the charts. I sell for eight ninety nine on my website. Okay, and the delta scalper indicator is two hundred and fifty. The price rejector, which I showed you earlier, is three fifty. My trading course two ninety seven. Right. The trading room I don't open to the public, but when I did, it was two ninety nine a month. But I closed it down just to work, so I could work more closer with the users of my software. And you get it for a one time payment. You get all of that for nine nine nine. Okay, and you, you get additional indicator, the Delta candles uh, for free. I, I throw it in there. And you know, it, it's a one time payment. You know, it's 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 nine nine nine. It's not a thousand bucks, but you know, it's just under a thousand bucks. But again, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want a full, you know, software and education course, or do you just want, you know, people say, well, I could buy a software for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, and I'll just, I'll just use it myself. Well, yeah, you, there's an opportunity cost, right? If you try to learn it yourself, it's going to take you time, and worse, it's going to take you money. You know, do you want to put every, how many thousands in your trading account and lose that because you don't know how to trade with order flow? Or would you rather spend a little bit extra and learn order flow and make better trading decisions? I mean, really, the, the choice is yours. Um, you know, people I know will say, "Well, you know, you, you can't become a successful trader until you blow up your account." You know, that, that, that's garbage. You know, that, that's put out by people that are failures as traders because they couldn't make it. You know, that'd be like saying a doctor can't operate successfully unless he's had a lot of patients die on his operating table. I mean, come on. So. You know, what do you want to do? You, if you want to learn it, go to my website. Um, I have a special page. You know, I said you know you can buy that stuff separately on my website, and it is more expensive on my website. But for investor inspiration, I do have you know a special. You know, I said it, it's the special link at www.orderflows.com/webinar-html. It, uh, it's in the chat there, so you know anybody, you guys could all see it. And you know, click, scroll down to the bottom, and you know, click on the button that lets me in. Um, if you go to the website, this is what it looks like. The page, you know, just scroll down. This is the top. You know, get to this button down here. It says "Let me in." I've got a couple of things you actually download for free. The Delta Surge indicator you can download from that website, and my hidden book, hidden trading locations, you know, which is some of my trade setups. You can download that. And you know, just real quick, it's you know, I said you know, you, you click on the this button, let me in, you get here, and you know, it's processed by PayPal. I don't get your payment information, it's done by PayPal. So you know, any problems, you know, I'll resolve it. If not, you know, it's, it's PayPal. I don't have your, your details. So again, you know, thanks for Renee, thanks for having me here. Um, you know, everyone, you just go to my website, orderflows.com, and if you're interested in the software, just go to the special page, orderflows.com slash webinar HTML. Any questions, email me, Mike at orderflows.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I put out videos you know, a couple times a week.